Good morning and welcome back to Western Pennsylvania. It's about 20 after 6 in the morning and I want to thank so many viewers that uh, commented about boy they're gonna miss my videos and wish to put them back on so I figured I'll make some once in a while and show projects I'm doing and this first project is uh, this is an 8 inch grinder and I have to grind a lot of these tools for my little lathe and I made this little sled, I call it, that goes back and forth, and I put my tools in there and grind it. But every time I want to grind them, I got to take this outside. Even if I put a vacuum here, I don't like it because you get this grit coming off the wheel and the metal coming off of these uh, tool steel, and it's going in the air. And I have both of my, uh, my Harley and my Suzuki here, and I just don't want that dust in here, so I always do it outside. Well, I always got to take this, and my shop being so small, I keep this in the back. I always got to pick it up with both hands, haul it out, haul it back in, and I said, I got to do something better. Well, Harbor Freight makes little grinders, I mean small ones, and I was going to get one. Then I said, well, you know, I like making things and that. I'm going to see what I have and make my own grinder. So that's what I'm going to show. So let me take this big one out of here. And I wanted to use this same mechanism here that I made. It's two pieces of brass, just because I didn't have one big enough. I put straps across, and I had shown this before. You unscrew this bottom piece, then the top one. Then this swings back and forth, and I have degrees on it. I have 30, 40, and 60 degree places I can stop it on both sides to grind these tools. Because this tool and I even have a 90. Drilled them and everything and made it. Uh, this tool has an angle on both sides. This one has to be, let's see, 40, 40 degrees, and this side 30 degrees. That's to cut from right to left. Then it's the opposite to cut the other way. But uh, I'm going to show, and then this table has to be bent down. In fact, it's up a little too high. It has to be bent down about nine degrees, so when you're grinding, it's like that. It's actually at an angle to make this come out right for clearance. So I take this little sled off. I want my next grinder to use this because I like the way this, I can do it so fast. So I'm going to take this big grinder and set it down. That thing is heavy. And here is what I'm working on, and I'm going to show the bottom first because I did this uh, last night. I have clamps on that I can take off now. And what I did was the wiring on it, I put silicone in here, and I'm putting hose uh, tubing on where it's going to set so it doesn't dig into my, you know, scrape my table and everything. And a lot of this is angle iron. And this angle iron is off of a bed frame. This stuff, man, is it, I try to drill a couple holes in it. It's hard, it's tough stuff. Weld's nice, but man, is it tough to drill holes in. I only had two holes to drill in it. So first, I wanna show, I have a piece of hose here, one more to go up on here. You can see I have one on both sides here, and then there's three places here that it hits, so I put the hose. So I'm going to take the camera over here, and I had shown this on one of my other videos that I had up about how to slice this hose fast and easy. So I'll show that. So this is the hose that I want a slice. I want to slice it clear down across, and I want it nice and smooth. Uh, it'll hold on better. And you can see the way this was wrapped. I want to slice this inside so when I put it on, it's more prone to stay down than if I sliced it on the outside of the curve. It's just the way once it's glued on there, it'll take this straight shape. So to start with, I took a block wood, drilled a hole in it so that this hose goes in there. And it's just a little bit, I think I ought to take a file and open it up just so it slides through real easy. And it doesn't have to be very big. And I tapped an X-Acto blade down in there with the tip coming in on the side, almost to the middle. So what I do is I put that in my vise, just squeeze it real easy. Then the blade's out this way, and I want to cut it on this inside. So I reach up underneath, and I slide it up 
until it just starts touching. To get it started, what I have to do is I have a little pair of needle nose, and I slide that up and I grab a hold of it, wiggle it up a little bit, and that's all it takes. There it is. And it's sliced, it's not, when you try to do it by hand, it's spiraled and it's pulling on it. But you can see that slices beautiful. So that's to get your tubing, and you can just keep feeding it through. This tubing I got at uh, Salvation Army. It was bags of it for two dollars. I got a couple bags of it. Gave the neighbor some uh, for using it on stuff. And boy, this is stuff. I wished I'd have bought a lot more of it. They had a lot more of it. I should have. Went back. Of course, it's gone. But now I'll show you what I use it for. So I have my tubing that I sliced, and it's going to be on this edge here. And it's so, like I said, it's, it's so much nicer to have this on these edges to set it down on this table or anything else. It don't scrape it. Plus, it keeps this uh, grinder from, if it vibrates a little bit, you know, when you, especially you turn it on and shut it off, it vibrates a little bit maybe, to keep it from moving. So now, to put this on this edge, I use this Permatex Clear RTV silicone, and it's an adhesive silicone. That's what I like. It says adhesive silicone for like gluing. And it's uh, clear. And this is the best way. I used to put a bead down across here, stick that on. Well, what was happening is I'm, as I try to push this hose on there, I'm pushing all my silicone off. It's so hard. I found a better way. What I've been doing is I spread that open, put this right in there, and just start squeezing as I go down through. And it pulls right over where that, uh, you know, the opening of the silicone is. And it just takes a little time. But once I get that in there and hold it just right, and that silicone's going in there, and it, see, since it's sliced and nice and straight, it's so easy to work with and do. Now, I got my silicone in there. That was easy. Got a little bit here just to wipe off. This stuff is gooey. Then I come up here and simply just start putting it on. Now you can see the silicone's inside. It's not, uh, if I would have put it on the metal part here, I'd have been pushing it off to get this on. I've tried it. It just don't work right. You get going pretty good, but this is the way to do it. And I cut this just a hair long, and once you have it on, you can slide it back and forth so to make sure it's over both edges. And I just have a little bit to trim there. But that's the easy way I found to do it, and it works great. This stuff takes a while to dry. I usually want to let it set overnight. Uh, my wiring, I put that up in there to hold it in over here where it comes out in a couple, uh, couple pull ties here and got it. But now I'll show the grinder. It all started with the motor. I knew I had this motor. My sister-in-law gave it to me years ago. Where she worked, it was getting rid of a lot of stuff and they told them, they put it out there, you want anything, take it. Well, she knows I work with stuff. She saw that motor, she took it, gave it to me, said, you want it? And I said, oh, heck yeah, you know, I can use it. So, let me see. <clears throat> Started with the mo uh, motor, and then it moved on to where I made this arbor in here with two set screws, then drilled it and tapped it, made this outer part, and that's a five-inch grinding wheel you can get at Harbor Freight, a little grinding wheel. Then I made all the rest of it out of scrap stuff I had, angle iron and everything, and I made this little table here for my little sled. So now I want to grind something like that tool. I tighten these down. I made these thumbnail or thumb tighteners on the lathe. Then I can put that in there and I can go back and forth and you can see how the angle is. That's 40 degrees. Now when I grind this side, I can take this out. 
swing it over and there's my 30 degrees for the other side and there's no guesswork in it I mean it is so quick and easy to use like that and I just push a tool up slide it back and forth and it gives me the perfect angle every time then this point right here you just put on there by hand and go back and forth and round it a little bit and it cuts it what I'll do is I'll take a bunch of these and I'm going to sharpen I'll do all one side first say if I have four or five of them then I switch it over here and do the other all the other sides and I can even do both ends of this tool steel and then for I'll leave that on there I put an angle iron down here uh, got it all welded and this is bent down about nine degrees and I put a handle on it so I can pick it up easy and you can see what really come out nice was the switch this switch plate net and I stamped on it on and off and you can see if the camera can pick it up this how this texture is well what I did with that is I made that plate out of aluminum and I took it put it in the drill press and I took a Dremel one of these little wire brushes and I went down on that plate and just started like this cross down across move over down across about a half a circle down I did it the whole way I think they call that burnishing I believe somebody could uh, put it in the comment correct me but I think it's called burnishing they used to do that a lot and they still do a lot of you know it just makes this instead of being so plain it just gives it a little better look you know I might as well make it look good doing all the work on it and let me plug it in and see how it works the switch I put on it here is a little I didn't want a big toggle 110 switch like a light switch this little switch come out of something uh, either a dehumidifier people give me old ones for the switches and I strip them down and uh, just use all parts and that little switch airs from that so it's a nice little rocker switch and turn it on nice and smooth now I can put that tool in there like that just go back and forth keep pushing it in grinds it perfect so it was a neat little project I did and it's smaller I can fit it in here better grab it take it out when I want it back in uh, that other one's just a, so heavy compared to this but if I have heavy stuff I can take the big one which isn't that often but now I got this and it's made for it uh, one other thing I want to do is try to figure out a way to keep this when I'm done maybe put a pull tie or not a pull tie but velcro across it so I can pick it up with one hand because I have to carry this this thing is heavy but it's made so that I like it heavy like that so it really floats across there and when I'm all done then I took uh, furniture polish and went over it wiped it makes it slide a lot better but I had to figure out when this was lined up with this that's where this table would go so I could slide back and forth I made it a lot longer than it had to be but that's fine and that's that project and something else I found at Walmart was this we were in there looking around and I wondered if you could do this and there's a follow on YouTube uh, I think believe he's deaf because when he puts a video on about the GoPros and he has a lot of them about the GoPros I always like to look under his stuff first because he has the writing uh, with the picture you know when he films he has to put all the lettering in because he, he doesn't talk uh, like you know uh, I don't know how to explain it <laughs> but the guy's great the young fella man he does excellent and I wondered if you could take your GoPro and hook it to the television and use the television as a monitor. Well, he showed, and then I happened to be in Walmart. I thought, well, I'd have to order off eBay. But here at Walmart, they sell this. It's a company, O-N-N, -N, and it's uh, a mini and micro HDMI to HDMI adapter. And it says right here uh, what it's for. 
and it's here, yeah, for use with GoPro. And I said, oh, that's it. It has, it plugs into an HDMI cable, which I have a real long one. I think it's like 19 foot. So I can set back if I want to and put the computer onto the television and watch stuff. And then it has these little ports, and that one little port fits the GoPro. And then you put it, I've tried it, and it works. And you can wire your record in that. There's a plug there. Now I have this microphone plugged into it. But I can also plug this in and use it as a monitor if I have to. And that's a, I couldn't believe they had that. I said, oh, man, there it is, because we were in there looking around. So that's my latest project. And then I have another one I might show, too, that I just finished up. But I've been wanting to finish this, and I had it started where I had the motor mounted on here, left it go, fooled around, didn't get to it, and then I finally got some other things done. I said, I'm going to finish this up. That way I can take this in and out. I can take all my little tooling and do it. So that's what I've been up to. So I thought, what the heck, once in a while put a YouTube up thing. You know, once I, I didn't show this step by step, but it gives you an idea of how you can make your own stuff. Uh, just all scrap I had and <laughs> just started with the motor and worked my way up and got it done. And I was glad that everybody, I hope they, they're interested in my videos. I know a lot of guys wanted me to put them back on, especially setting the valves, the valve tappets for the Suzuki. I put that back up. A guy asked me, he said he was good, just getting ready to do it, and I had taken mine off, so I put them two back up. And uh, he just emailed me. He has my email address, and he said he got his done, made the uh, bike sound a lot better. He said his was all tight. And for some reason, I don't understand, you lock that down good, but they kind of... Uh, they tighten up, so I'm going to go by every 15,000 miles to do it. That's what the book, the climber book says, so that's what I'm going to go to by setting them. But it made a world of difference on mine. The one guy that used to get on me about, you don't have to set them, don't set them, I don't understand. I set mine, it made, it made a difference. They needed set. And I know the guy before me that had it, I know him well, and uh, I knew he didn't have them set. So I did it, because the book said you have to do it. And they are right, I believe it. Here in western Pennsylvania, just a while back, we had a big snowstorm go through, had a lot of snow. Now, well, we had snow the same day, snow, rain, then it turned to ice, then back to snow, all that built up. And now it's going up into the mid-40s during the day, so it's sloppy out, it's so bad. My nephew stopped up a couple days ago and said about, man, he can't wait to ride. And I said, well, you got to get, we got to get together and get his front wheel, bring it up here because I have the tire changer and put his new front wheel on. We put a back one on last year. The new one he, he has isn't that bad. And I said, well, let it go, you know, and just change it over winter. So we have to get together and do that. But, uh, oh, man, it seems like I've, it's been so long since I rode. Washed my bike completely last fall, really good. Up under the fenders, everything. Cleaned that thing. Now I want to do that clay bar system on it, wax it, get it all done before I take it out again. But I'm waiting till it dries up because, man, that thing gets slopped up. It's a mess to clean. I mean, you can hose it off, but, you know, it just, I don't like riding like that. So, I'm back. I don't know. <laughs> Just if I have something interesting, I'll show it. Maybe carry on. <laughs> so, thanks for watching.